Hi guys, um, so today I want to talk to you about a project that I've been working on which is an Arduino Nano based uh, digital spirit level. Um, it also uses the MPU6050 uh, gyro module. Um, I'll just sort of walk you through the, the breadboard and what I've done here. Um, so here's the actual breadboard itself and you can see we've got the Arduino Nano just over on this side of the, the breadboard here. We've also got the MPU6050 module down on the board here. We've got an LCD which has got an I2C connection on the back so that we only need the power, the ground and the two I2C uh, lines. We've got five um, LEDs here which have got resistors uh, for current limiting. We've got a, a piezo buzzer and we have a switch on here as well. So first thing I'll do is I will take you through how the circuit works. Um, if I just power it up, I'm just powering it up using a USB power pack at the moment. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but at the moment on the screen um, it tells you the, the angle and the roll. The angle is essentially tilting left and right, and the roll is tilting front to back. Um, the main thing I'm using this for is the angle, the roll I've got on there just because it didn't cost any more to put it in the code and I've got an extra line um, but it's not necessary to do that. What I've also done is, so obviously the MPU6050 is giving the information, the, the Arduino Nano is converting that into the appropriate angles using the code that I've got It's and it's putting it on the screen. In addition there are these five LEDs and you can see at the moment the green LED is lit so that basically is telling you that the angle is around about zero which we can see on the screen just here. Now if I tilt this just slightly when it goes over one degree it goes to the amber and then when it goes over two degrees it goes to the red and the same if I go back the other way so over one degree it goes to amber and over two degrees it goes to red and it'll continue on red way beyond that. Now there's two extra things that I've added on here as well. Um, if I was to reset this and then press and hold the button it'll say setting up and then calibrating and if I release that it'll do a countdown and then it'll say it's calibrating it'll tell you that this board is horizontal or the MPU 6050 is horizontal which it is um, and then you can see that the angle angles here are zero. Now what that's done is it has taken a selection of readings from the MPU6050, um, it takes a thousand readings, it averages them out and then they become an offset. Um, so if your module isn't completely flat then it means that you can calibrate it to zero. Now once it's done that those offsets are set into the EEPROM memory of the Arduino Nano so that when you power this down and you power it up again it doesn't matter what surface you're on it'll give you a true reflection of the level. Now the only thing is when you're calibrating you need to make sure that this surface here that you're on is completely level because if it isn't then it's going to give you a false reading. So when you're doing the calibrating like I say you just need to make sure that it's on the level. Now another feature of this button is that when the circuit is actually running if I press and hold the release the button you can hear it beeping and as I move further from zero see the beeping changes and then as I get closer it gets higher and then when it's level you give it a high pitch in the same the other way coming down it's now getting closer and now it's level um, obviously that has plus and minus one degree so depending on how much you want that to be accurate you may want to change that. Let's just turn that off again. There you go, I didn't press it hard enough. Um, so the reason I added the feature of the piezo buzzer here with, with that button press is so that if you're, uh, for example I'm a kitchen fitter by trade so if I was levelling a kitchen unit this level would be on the top of the unit and I would be underneath trying to adjust the legs so by using the piezo buzzer 
you could use that as an indication of whether or not you are near to level without having to constantly look at your level from above. Um, so yeah, so you've got three features. You've got the LED, which or, or LCD, sorry, which gives you the actual display in uh, of the angle in degrees. You've got the LEDs, which give you a visual representation just for ease of of are you near to centre, and you've got the piezo buzzer, which gives you if you want it um, an audible representation as well. So that's essentially the breadboard. The um, the five LEDs are connected onto pins uh, D3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. The piezo buzzer is on pin D8 and the switch is on pin D2. Now the other end of the piezo, the LEDs and the switch all go to ground. The connection for the MPU 6050 is the SDA and SCL lines from the Arduino Nano, which are pins A4 and A5, which go to SCA and SDL on the unit respectively. And the same SCL and SDA lines then go on to the LCD <coughs> because it can share the same bus and they happen to have different addresses anyway. Uh, in addition, you've got five volts and ground to the LCD and five volt and ground to the MPU 6050. So that's the actual um, board itself. Another th another additional thing is because if you were actually putting this in a spirit level, the chances are this unit would be vertical, not horizontal. So if you were to tip this unit vertical and you were to restart it, it would actually come up on the screen saying that it's vertical and it would read correctly because obviously the orientation is different. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the code now and then you can see exactly what's what with that. So I'll just turn that off a moment so that we can move on to the, the code side of things. So let's switch to the code window. So here we have here, um, this is the code that I've written. It's based on code um, that was originally done by, well the main uh, spirit level code was done by uh, Dronebot Workshop. Um, they've got a YouTube channel but they've also got a website, dronebotworkshop.com uh, and were, the code for the angles I, I took mainly from a guy called Paul McWhorter who has a website called toptechboy.com So if I just take you through the code so at the top here we have the include for the libraries. So I'm using the wire library because I'm running I2C. I've got the liquid crystal I2C library because my liquid crystal display is I2C, not uh, normal. Um, I've got the math library because that's used for calculating some of the codes. And the EEPROM library because I'm obviously saving to EEPROM. So the first thing we do is define the liquid crystal I2C uh, LCD so I've got the first thing I've got is the address which is 27 um, but yours might be uh, 3F or it might be something different so you need to change that accordingly and I'm using a 16 uh, by 2 display um, but if you're using a 20 by 4 display obviously you would need to change that accordingly so as we go down then I'm, I've got definitions for the different pins so switch pin is D2 and the LEDs are 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 respectively. The buzzer, as I mentioned, is on pin 8. And for the orientation, rather than doing orientation 0 and 1, having to remember which is which, I've defined 0 as horizontal and 1 as vertical. So there's just a couple of constants there. So moving down again, uh, defining all the variables. Now the, uh, the gyro and acceleration variables that you see there, they're the raw values that I get from the MPU 6050 module. And then the CAL values, which are the calibration values for gyro and acceleration, are the ones that I um, create by doing the routine at the beginning, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. So theta and, and phi, or phi, however you want to call it, um, they're just two variables that I actually got from the calculations that Paul McWhorter did. Um, I thought, well, there's no point in, in reinventing the wheel. I, I know exactly what they do. Um, so that relates to the, the pitch and the roll, so the, the angle and the, the roll values. Um, but we'll come to those in a little bit. Um, so And there's a few other bits and pieces there. Everything's mentioned, so if you need to, to check it, then 
feel free to read through that. So in the main setup routine, the first thing we do is assign all the pins uh, for inputs and outputs as appropriate. On the switch pin, I've actually got the internal pull up on that one so there's no external resistor and everything needed and it was literally just connection to ground and to the pin. Uh, start the serial monitor because there's the option of monitoring on the serial but if you don't have any need for that you can always comment that out. Uh, start the I2C, start the LCD and then just so that people know that it's setting up, it prints setting up. It then sets up the MPU 6050 registers. Now this uh, this subroutine function is at the bottom of this code and I'll come to that in a little while. So we're not using any external Arduino um, libraries for this, we are doing everything directly in this code. Okay, so in addition to that I just put a small delay in so that you can actually see that it says setting up, otherwise it'd be so quick you'd never see it. Uh, we initialise the timer, now this timer is going to be for timing the, the main loop. Um, so that it runs at a, a, the speed that I want it to. So then first of all, um, if the switch pin is zero, so if it's been pressed, it enters into calibration mode. Okay. So we mentioned that it's calibrating, we then do a countdown. The reason for the countdown is so that once you press the button you can leave it settle and there's no risk of knocking it and coming up with false readings. Okay. Once it's done that, we then get the raw data from the MPU 6050 module. Um, if the acceleration X is less than acceleration Z, the, the, that's, that's in the raw values, um, then it means that it is vertical, uh, horizontal, sorry, um, and if it's horizontal it runs through this code, if it isn't then it's vertical and it runs through the code further down. So um, it basically tells you that it's the, the um, module is horizontal, it then goes through, it reads the data, takes all the um, the data for the gyro and for the acceleration um, and then puts it into the calibration values. It does that a thousand times, it then divides the whole thing by a thousand to give you an individual offset and then that calibration data is saved into the EEPROM. So when it's horizontal you'll notice that the acceleration Z uh, value isn't calibrated. Now the reason for that is because acceleration Z is always going to have a constant value because of gravity and if you put that into the offset it's just going to throw things out completely. Okay so then we have just a small delay before moving on. So if it's vertical and not horizontal it does exactly the same thing but the difference is um, instead of acceleration X and Y value it does acceleration Y and Z value because it's on its side and acceleration X, because that is essentially going to always have gravity on it, isn't put into the offset because of gravity. Now they are put in different sections, so the uh, EPROM, EEPROM address uh, for doing the horizontal calibration starts at EEPROM address 0 and the vertical starts at EEPROM address 24. The reason for this is you can do calibration for both and then it doesn't matter in which, which orientation you use it, you can then, you've then got the details you want. Okay, so just before we go into the main loop, we set up the LCD baseline, which again is a subroutine further down, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, which essentially just means that it puts on there the uh, angle and the roll value um, placeholders ready for taking the main data. So now moving on to the main program loop. Um, if the switch pin is pressed, um, that essentially turns the buzzer on. Now the delay there is so that you have a chance to press it and register it without it constantly changing. So if you if you press it and the buzzer's off it'll turn it on, if the buzzer's on it'll turn it off. So we then go into the main reading of the data and again if the acceleration X is less than acceleration Z then we know it's horizontal, if not we know it's vertical. So that just sets the orientation. So then if it's uh, horizontal, um, for the first time through it checks the EEPROM and the first thing it checks is has the calibration data been set. If it hasn't been set then it will say not calibrated so that you know that it's not calibrated and give a, a one second delay so that you can see that and then this, se and this section is then ignored and it moves on. If the calibration data is there the calibration details are then put into the, the appropriate variables 
and again this section isn't repeated. We then subtract the calibration values that we've taken from EEPROM and put them into, or a sub, sorry, subtract them from the, the data that we get, um, which gives us our actual data. We then run through these calculations, which if I go into explaining them, I, I'm not going to do them justice. Um, if you go to the the link that I'll I give for Paul McWhorter's um, videos, you'll see that he explains this a lot better than I can. But essentially, um, the acceleration and the gyro, because of the sample rate, need to be the the raw values need to be divided by these values here. So the acceleration is divided by 4096, the gyro is divided by 65.5. Now that change is dependent on the sample rate which you set in the um, the main routine that gets the data um, and again the, the video that um, I'll link to that shows you how the MPU 6050 is used and all the registers work that gives you really good information on that. Uh, the 9.8 is gra gravity, the effect of gravity um, and then here you've got um, two-thirds of pi and then 360 because we're talking about circles um, but that's it said, the, the essence of it but I'm afraid I don't explain it anywhere near as, as Paul McWhorter does so feel free to have a look at that if you want to know exactly how this works um, and again this is just a timing uh, thing that we use um, for reference so that we know how the gyro changes over time we then use that timing along with the gyro data and along with the data that we get from up here as a low pass filter so essentially the uh, the gyro gives us an instant uh, change in the uh, the angle but because of the drift that you can get in the gyro the the main acceleration data is what it then levels out to so that's the so theta and phi are what you end up with okay now if you're doing the vertical calculation it's exactly the same as the horizontal the only difference is I've swapped a couple of the variables over to allow for the fact that it's tilted on its side so once we get through either of those sections so regardless of the orientation we then move on to here display count is incremented by one on each uh, iteration of the loop and it's only on every 100th iteration that the display and the LEDs are updated just so that it's not a blur because it doesn't need to be really. Um, so we check whether phi which is the um, angle, the main angle, uh, is less than two degrees or between two and one or so on and so forth and then the appropriate LED is written to and the tone on the buzzer if the tone if the buzzer is enabled. And then what I've done here is because it, it can give you a negative and a positive value and I just don't see any reason for having anything other than the positive value, I've set it so that um, if it gives a negative value it changes it to a positive. And then at the end it prints those to the LCD um, and then the serial uh, data here just shows what those values are, resets display count to zero and then goes back to the beginning. And then we go. Th we uh, just check our our main loop, and once our main loops run out of time, it then goes back to the second, uh, uh, back to the beginning. So now we're on to the subroutine section. Um, so this is the set LCD baseline routine, which essentially just prints the angle and the roll ready for for accepting the angle. So it sets it up, uh, but because I've called it two or three times in my code it was just easy to put that into a separate function of its own a uh, separate subroutine so that I wasn't duplicating myself. We then have the setup MPU 6050 registers now this gives all the information and all the commands for directly accessing the MPU 6050 module um, now if you want to know exactly what everything does here obviously there's lots of comments here which explain what things do but in addition to that um, you can look at the video all about setting up the MPU 6050 which will give you precise information um, and again moving on to the read MPU 6050 data um, again this just requests the data using the appropriate commands um, and then puts those into the variables and then takes it to the top of the program so essentially that's all there is to it um, and like I say when you then plug the device in and you set it going 
it's always going to give a true representation of your angle and if you want to set some levels and you can't see what you're doing you can then use the the buzzers there you go so hopefully this has been useful for you um, I haven't put this into a case because this is more of a proof of concept um, and I don't have a, a case here at the moment um, obviously there are things that you could do differently you might want to have more LEDs you might want to change the ranges so that this is only sort of plus or minus half a degree or whatever depending on the accuracy you want um, you might want to check change this display for an OLED display which is smaller and more compact um, and you know there's there's lots of things you can do with it you don't have to run it exactly as I have but this is just designed to give you an idea of what is achievable so I hope it's been helpful um, and I hope it's been interesting to look at um, feel free to give me any feedback um, and yeah thanks very much for looking <laughs>